Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CSTV. I'm your host Kathleen Egaltoto, Madam CS, and this is the striker. Stay tuned and have it through and thrill. In the striker today, we are looking at Kenya's top story. Story number one: Honorable Peter Sarasia has decided to take the pool by its own actually and lecture ODM and Raira over what he terms. ODM political party using wana siyasa as imbrukenges. Actually, he said, mambo ya ODM ni uchinga na yeye hataki. And it's not going for any consultative meeting in state house all anywhere where their party leader, that is Raira Amoro Odinga, may tell them because it just feels that Laira Amoro Odinga is not up to anything good as far as um, the Western region is combined, is concerned. Actually, he said that when Baba had an opportunity to give the Western part of Kenya something nice, he decided to give the position of the treasury, the CS position when it came, to rural people and gave Obaranya Fulisa. That he, is exact words. So one could wonder why is actually Peter Salazia taking this bold step, you know, and lecturing Raira Amoro Odinga openly, publicly, without any fear. And then the second story, actually, it is about the AU chairmanship. It's like, actually, Raira is not going to win this particular position. Recent events actually shows that most countries are supporting the Chiputi candidate. And recently, Somalia actually decided not to support Kenya, but instead support Chiputi. And we are also going to look at is if Papa actually qualified for this particular position? Does he have enough support actually for this particular position? Does he has a does he have a record that actually can be looked at and then we say he has this particular chances of winning? Before we dive into these stories, if you are new to this particular channel, welcome home, Karibu Nyumbani. Kindly remember to subscribe, like, share, and comment on our videos. And more importantly, than on the notification bell so that the next time we are uploading a video, YouTube will automatically notify you. If you are new to this particular channel, uh, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Thank you for tuning, tuning in. Wewe ni wamana sana. And kindly remember to like share and comment on our videos now to the major thing of today peter salazi is one is the first time mp actually and many people say that he was given elections out of uh, thoughts out of sympathy but he has proven that actually is among the working young parliamentarians that we have in this particular country many times are those ones that he comes out to support the common citizen in what actually they need and he has always been very very conspicuous and very unique in terms of voting for some things in parliament we have seen Peter Sarazia actually many a times standing to support the common citizen. Now, recently, um, I think it was yesterday, if not yesterday, part one, Peter Sarazia was addressing a crowd in Kakamega. I don't know what the event was, but he was addressing a crowd in Kakamega. And what he decided to do is that he decided to actually lecture Baba. And he's saying that, the other day, he saw like ODM has decided to join the government. And he says there have been members of parliament who, have, who are going to state house that they are going to do consultative meeting. And he terms those consultative meeting as, you know, uh, um, not worth it as a psychophancy because he doesn't need anything from state house to deliver for his people. He went ahead actually to say, actually, um, it is so wrong when the members of parliament fought in parliament after they have been lectured or after they have been told on what to do by the executive. And therefore he said from where he stand, it doesn't believe at all that actually the members of parliament are an extension of the executive. He believes parliament is independent and he does not have any more authority or responsibility to go to Ruto or to State House to receive any information on how they are supposed to vote. And that's why he says that this aspect, you know there's a problem right now in terms of the members of parliament and the county government in terms 
terms of budgetary allocations. While the Gant government wants more, also the members of parliament wants more. And they are saying that actually the members of parliament are being intimidated by the executive, which feels that the county government should get more. I think this is what actually uh, informed Peter Sarazia to do what? To start lecturing um, um, Baba and the ODM members of parliament who actually went where? To, went to, to state house. Now, he told his governor, Barasa, that you work for your people. If you work for the people, the people will automatically choose you. It's not about political parties. And he said, ODM has done nothing good for the people of Western Kenya. He said that the roads that actually Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta started are still stagnated because the current government has done nothing to complete them. He said how the current government lied to Barasa that they are going to, re to renovate the Bukungu Stadium and they came, uprooted things and they have done nothing about it. He even spoke about actually the Kakamega hair strip that had few potholes that was supposed to be amended and they have not amended and the hair strip cannot be used. And you know, from where Peter Sarraza stands, it's like telling the governor, you see this whole DM of yours is not helping you anything and this government is not going to help Help you anything but if you work for the people of kakamega they will automatically elect you it doesn't matter about the chama they will still elect you and then he told the member the, the governor that maneno ya udm yo uchinga mimi staki kusikia and they said that baba has always betrayed them he had promised them something and it's the position of a cs and when that opposition position came courtesy of cheni c Baba took the best position, that is the treasury, to rule Nyanza, and they decided to give Obaranya Furisa. That's what he called it. So, from where I stand, I think Peter, uh, Peter Salazia is among the young people of this particular country who feels like Baba and the ODM is just overrated. It is just misleading people. And it's an, a political party that it does not have... Uh, an agenda and a principle that governs it. Why? Each time there's an opportunity for an handshake, they rush to join the government and then they forget everything about what they have been standing for. And therefore I think it has reached a point where even the young members of ODM feel betrayed by Papa. They feel neglected, they feel used, despised and downtrodden. And that's why actually Peter Salasia is saying ODM ni chama inatumia watu kama mburukenge. You know, maybe lack the best words to describe it. But the thing is, there is an aspect of ODM being using young people because it's overrated. People always think that if you are in ODM, then that's the only way you can win. And that's why he comes on and he gives a solution. That work for your people. And if you work for your people, they will definitely elect you. So that is Peter Salazia. What do you think? Definitely, Baba and the ODM must react to what Peter Salasia said. How they are going to react to that address, I don't know. But one thing I know that that reaction is not going to be a positive one. And going forward, Peter Salasia now is on Baba's radar and is also on Ruto's radar. And it's not going to be the best for the two. Just like Ndindi Nyoro, Babu Wino are not the best for Ruto and Raira right now. And at that particular point, there's a very big probability this feeling of betrayal, as it is spreading among the young members of ODM and UDA, these young parliamentarians who are super minded and are able to see how they are being used are likely to come together to form their own political parties. And from where I stand, Peter Salazia, Babu Wino, and these other Ndindi mm, Nyoro now are on the same side of the story. All of them are trying to detach themselves from their principles and their so-called, you know, political party readers. What do you think? Your opinion in the comment section below. To the next story. You know, ever since this AU chairmanship things came about, people saw a different kind of Raila that we have never seen. We saw a, a kind of Laila who today is telling us something's bad, Tomorrow is the one drumming up for it and supporting it. We even saw actually Lailo Moro Dinga supporting the Adan group. 
you know and trying to tell us why that partnership is good where the group the, the group the, the organization or the group is the best to work in Kenya etc we have seen people who are in ODM you know the likes of Mbadi right now actually um telling us that you know this is the only amount of money we can give to the counties the to the constituencies and counties this is the only you know the government does not have money you know we have seen people who used to critique this government simply because baba decided to be an uda ally for the sake of his au chairmanship changing the tune but i'm wondering is Bab actually likely to win this thing? From where I stand, the answer is no. Baba is in for a disappointment and a very big disappointment next year. And from where I stand, actually, I wish he never even entered that race. Because I think Baba thought, you know, there is a way we have hyped Baba in the country in terms of the, he's, he's, he has fought for democracy, he has done this, he's always supporting the people. But we always forget that Papa was not doing these things alone. We have had people in this country who lost their lives because they were fighting for the democracy of this country. We have had people who have been also arrested, released, sent to exile, courtesy of fighting for democracy and freedom in this particular country. So sometimes when we, have, we hype Baba is the reason why we have this freedom, nini, 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 I think it will Baba kwa kiri sana. And they forgot that the way we Kenyans may see him is not the same way the international community sees him. The international community sees widely, you know. And Baba has been the one who was actually, you know, um, coming in saying the handshake, the broad based government. You cannot tell us you don't agree with a certain government. Then all of a sudden you are shaking hands with it. You are forming a broad based government with the same person whom you are saying is corrupt, is fair, he has done APCD, etc. With that negative rep reputation that Baba doesn't know that the international community can pick up, he confidently entered the AU chairmanship race. And Ruto promised him that he would deliver victory. What they forget is that voting at the AU is not like voting here in Kenya, where we will go to the streets and sing Baba, 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 Baba. A lot of, a me, a lot of many things, or a lot of things are at a consideration for Baba to win that seat. And we are looking at his combat actually from Eastern Africa. Look at the guy from Djibouti. How many languages does he speak? He has Amlike, he has French, and then there's also an aspect of religion in it. So one, all the French-speaking countries are going to fight for that person, courtesy of patriotism and identity. Number two, all the Islamic countries in Africa are going to fight for that guy, courtesy of patriotism and religious identity. Number three, the record of that person is not something actually to assume professionally, diplomatically and even politically so while Baba can tell us here in kenya the way he has been fighting for democracy etc which he has not been doing alone the other guy has a lot a lot to do with diplomacy foreign policy policy foreign, foreign relations etc so i don't know why actually papa felt like he can win this seat and from where i to sit actually i think baba has a long way to go that even somalia itself our neighbor here has decided not to fight for baba and one could wonder why actually did somalia somalia decide to pack the Djibouti guy you know this number one there's identity it is automatic there's identity you know and then kenya is not the best of somalia's friends and just like Somalia, that Kenya is not the best of our of their friends, there are so many other countries that don't like Kenya. Especially the way President Ruto had started, you know, to present himself as the only person who can speak for Africa, you know, etc. Don't think that other presidents were very happy, like now you come to a first time president and then now you start lecturing on you know presenting Kenya as this the we are the only you are the only people who can speak on behalf of Africa, etc. 
So Somalia will not fought for Kenya because number one, we have had our historical conflicts and grievances. We don't have a history that is so nice as countries. Give, forget anything to do with citizenship. As countries. Somalia always feels that Kenya interferes in its politics. Because Kenya has even made ties with Somaliland. Well, Somalia has a problem with Somaliland. Actually, Somalia identifies Somaliland as its own territory. And the Kenya has diplomatic ties with Somaliland. So this is also another point of confrontation. You know? Kenya and Somalia, we have had cases whereby we have even shut down embassies on each other and, you know, recalled our convoys and our ambassadors. So I don't think Somalia could in any way think of supporting Kenya. The fact that actually Somalia is, has, has, be part, has become part of, I don't know, the East Africa community, if at all they had admitted it fully, I don't think that Somalia can be compelled be, because of regional a community or organization to support for Kenya. And if Somalia cannot fought for Kenya, there are so many other countries that are also not likely to fought for Kenya. We are not even sure, sure whether Tanzania can reach somewhere and decide to pack up the Chiputi guy. And therefore, from where I stand, Baba, so many countries, all the countries um, that speak French, Baba, all the countries that have a large population as Islam, Baba, all the countries that identify themselves with something to do with Amra Aramaic, Baba, and all the countries that values diplomacy and international relations are going to fight for the guy from Djibouti. And therefore, I think it's high time that Baba started making peace with himself and the thing on how is bouncing back to local politics if he doesn't win there. Because we are not going to demonstrate in, uh, in Ethiopia, or we are not going to say the elections have been leaked. So I think from where I stand, Baba is not likely to win the AU chairmanship. What is your opinion? What is your, um, what is your, um, your take about it? Do you think Baba is going to win? How many countries do you think are going to support Papa? Leave your comment on the comment section below. And yeah, see you next time. Kathleen. Ciao.